This is an illustration of the use of an internal standard. Internal standards are commonly used to account for small variations in run-to-run -run of some instrumental analysis. The variations can be caused by an instrumental problem, or it might be some reproducibility issue that's entirely outside the instrument, such as the injection of a 1 microliter sample volume onto a GC using a 10 microliter syringe. It's very difficult to get reproducibility in that kind of example. The main idea is to include a standard of some known concentration along with the analyte in both the sample and the calibration solutions. Let's assume that we have a linear response for both the standard and the analyte. We can call the proportionality constant that relates the concentration to the signal the response factor. We can write a similar equation for the analyte and its response factor. If we divide equation 2 by equation 1, we get this ratio. The ratio of the signals is equal to the ratio of the response factors times the ratio of the concentrations. And let's call that equation 3 for convenience. Alternatively, we can rearrange that to show the signal of the analyte or the concentration of the analyte is equal to the ratio of the response factors times the signal for the standard divided by the standard concentration. I'm going to replace the ratio of the response factors with a quantity F. We'll make this equation 4. Now what good is all that? The most common issues that lead to a change in response factor for an analyte will also cause a similar change in the response factor for the standard. So if MA or the response factor for the analyte increases by about 10%, so does the response factor for the standard. That means F will remain constant and we automatically adjust for these variations that were out of our control. Let's work an example problem. Let's assume that this gas chromatogram is for a mixture of a calibration solution. So we're injecting one microliter of a mixture that contains an internal standard of naphthalene. And here is the naphthalene peak. And the naphthalene is present at 1.05 micrograms per milliliter. Our analyte is a solution of anthracene in hexane. So the analyte peak is the taller of the two. Since this is a calibration solution, we also know that the anthracene is present at 1.78 micrograms per milliliter. We're interested in what the concentration of the anthracene is in a sample that was prepared by a 1 milliliter of 2.10 micrograms per milliliter of naphthalene standard with 2.00 milliliters of hexane extract. In the sample, the naphthalene and anthracene gave peak heights of 50.2 millimeters and 21.7 millimeters on the chart, respectively. So let's apply equation 4 to the standard mixture. The data for the standard mixture allows us to calculate the value of F. So we have the signal of A is 115.1 .1 over the concentration of the analyte is 1.78 micrograms per milliliter. 
that's equal to F times the signal for the standard, 80.6, divided by 1.05 micrograms per milliliter. So rearranging, we can solve for F, which gives us a numerical value of 0 0.8. Four, two, three. Now we can insert the value of F into equation four in order to solve for the concentration of the unknown anthracene in the sample. Rearranging, we get an equation for the analyte, X, in terms of the concentration of the standard in this sample. However, we need to calculate the concentration of the standard after it's been diluted with the sample mixture. Recall the standard naphthalene was delivered in a one milliliter pipette at 2.10 micrograms per milliliter. And the new solution volume is just the sum of the two volumes, the one milliliter of the standard naphthalene plus the two milliliters of the sample solution itself. That yields 0 0.700 micrograms per milliliter for S. Now we can substitute all of these back in to calculate the, for the concentration of the anthracene. So we have the ratio of the signal level for the anthracene that was 21.7 chart units over the signal for the naphthalene standard, 50.2 units times the concentration of the standard, 0 0.700 micrograms per milliliter divided by the ratio of the response factors, 0.8423 and that gives us a numerical value of 0 0.3592. And that's micrograms per milliliter, but that's not the anthracene concentration in the original solution uh, before we mixed with the naphthalene standard. So what's that concentration? Well, it's the number we just calculated, but we also have to take into account the dilution factor. There were three milliliters total, and the original sample size was two milliliters. So that ratio of three to two gives us a net concentration of 0 0.5388 microliters, and rounding to three significant figures, we have 0 0.539 micrograms per milliliter.